and who lives and who gets canceled. We never would have thought, oh God, that cyberspace would take the place of ordinary, ordinary life and ordinary movement. We can sit in one chair all day and have traveled and journeyed all over the world, talked to friends and, and have been everywhere even though we have not moved. One second. Lord, we waste time in cyberspace. Things aren't real in cyberspace. Help us to wean ourselves away from it, oh God. And get back to loving people in actuality. To get back to caring about people. Not giving them a thumbs up, but giving them a helping hand. Lord, this is a time of great suffering and a time of great fear. You have done your part by making them afraid. Now it's time for us to, to, to capitalize if there is such a thing. Because people are afraid and they're afraid of death and we have the answer. Whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. Believest thou this? That's your challenge. And we have that assurance. That doesn't matter what happens from day to day. In fact, no matter which way it goes, death is an upgrade to every one of us, oh God. And we know it. For us to live is Christ and to die is gain. We know what the word says and we believe it in our hearts. So, oh God, we're going to leave cyberspace behind. Yes, there are times we can use it. We thank you for the privilege of communicating with our loved ones around the world instantaneously, oh God. We can post wonderful images of ourselves. Even with the images that we post, we take a dozen of them and select the best one, oh God, and we put our best foot forward all the time in cyberspace. But it's not really us. We all pretending. We all putting on. We play dress up in cyberspace, oh God. We get hookups in cyberspace, oh God. But Lord, in this world we have no enduring substance. We seek a city which hath foundation, whose builder and maker is God. So, oh Lord, we come confessing that we've sinned. We've sinned against you. Have mercy on us, O oh God. We are aware against thee, and thee alone have we sinned. We don't call your name when we should. There are times we used to even just say the name of Jesus when we were excited. People told us, don't do that. You're calling his name. No, we can call your name Jesus, Jesus. We can call your name forever and ever. There's nothing wrong with that. So we're not going to hide from the truth anymore. Lord, clean up our speech. People are watching us. People are looking to see you through us. And we have failed miserably, oh God, but we confess that we have sinned. Now we're going to leave ourselves in the care of your spirit. For he searches all things, yeah, the deep things of God. You gave us a comforter. You gave us an interpreter. You gave us a prayer warrior. For he helpeth our infirmities, for we know not what to pray for as we are. But the Spirit himself maketh intercessions for us with groanings that cannot be uttered. And you that search in the heart knoweth what is the mind of the Spirit, because he makes intercessions for us saints according to your will. Thank you. Just thank you. For one another, we thank you. Lord, we realize that we may need one another more going forward than we did looking backward. So as we come rejoicing, we bless your name. We are not going to 
be afraid. Neither will we be ashamed to call Jesus our God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. You didn't abandon us. You didn't turn your back on us. We will never abandon you. We will never turn our backs on you. No matter what men say, we will trust you. So, Father, we love you back, and we thank you for all that you have done. In Jesus' holy name we come, and God's people said amen. Amen. amen.
that is different from anything that our generation or even America is not aware of. We are in a place and a time that we've never seen before. Technology has gone way beyond common sense. And now technology is the thing. And the internet or cyberspace is the place where people spend their time. The vast majority of our children's time, the vast majority of our young adults' time, and the vast majority of a lot of our time is spent in cyberspace. That's where everything gets done. Our businesses are thriving in cyberspace. You can purchase your stock in cyberspace, everything, it's so wonderful. You can gain so much information in cyberspace, but there are some perils to moving everything that we have into cyberspace. And I'll show you some of those perils in the next few minutes. I'd like to call your attention to a passage of scripture in Joshua chapter 24, the book of Joshua chapter 24. the 24th chapter. If you have that passage, I'd like for you to stand and we'll read a couple of verses. I'll spend a little bit more time. Don't close your Bible after you read the two verses that we'll read. But this is where we're going to get, can we say, our theme and even the title of our message today. The book of Joshua, chapter 24, we're going to read verses 14 and 15. I will read, I'd just like for you to follow along and confirm that it's exactly what the scripture says. I'm Amen. reading from a King James Bible. It says in verse 14, Now therefore, fear the Lord, mm -hmm. and serve him in sincerity and in truth. Yeah. Right. And put away the gods which your fathers served on the other side of the flood and in Egypt, yeah. and serve ye the Lord. All right. And if it seem evil unto you to serve the Lord, choose you this day, this day, this day yeah. whom, whom you will serve. All right, all right. Whether the gods which your fathers served that were on the other side of the flood or the gods of the Amorites in whose land you dwell. But as for me and my house, Thank you, Lord. we will serve the Lord. Yes, sir. You may be seated. The title of my message today is It's Time to Choose. Uh, uh, uh. We are staying with our series. We are looking at plans for the future. Our theme for the year from Jeremiah 29 and 11. And on last week we looked at the precious promises that God made to us. We looked at some of those and we, we actually spoke about it. Alright? And today it's time to choose. I can start here. For those of you that aren't able to get us on YouTube, it's because I've been punished. They said you were suspended for a week. And if you violate our policies again, we'll suspend you for two weeks the next time. So here's what they had to say. Your content violated YouTube's community guidelines and has been removed. Uh. Hi, Perfect Peace Broadcast Ministry. Uh, uh. Our team has reviewed your content and unfortunately, we think it violates our community guidelines. We removed the following content from YouTube. Perfect Peace Ministry Hour, January 8th, 2021. We know that this might be disappointing, but it's important to us that YouTube is a safe place for all. If content breaks our rules, we remove it. If you think we've made a mistake, you can appeal, and we'll take another look. Keep reading 
for more details. Here's how your content violated the policy. YouTube doesn't allow claims about COVID-19 vaccinations that contradict experts, expert consensus from local health authorities or the World Health Organization. Are you all listening to this? The World Health Organization. The officials who pass guidelines, Dr. Fauci and these are the individuals. So what they say is law in cyberspace. Now, they suspended me because of COVID-19 and what I had to say about it and some of the claims that I considered and considered again, and it just doesn't seem to add up. And if you were to in any way go against the consensus view, then basically we have the privilege of suspending you. The next time you do it, we'll suspend you for two weeks. And after that, we'll cancel you. If they can cancel the most powerful man in the free world, right. they certainly can cancel yeah. Derek Noel. Right. But you can cancel Derek Noel, but you're not going to cancel the word of God. You're not going to cancel Jesus, who is the Christ of God. Now, here's the dilemma. Our pastors, the ones who have all suspended worship, and have moved to the online platform with their church services. Yeah. Now that we have sown the wind, we're going to reap the whirlwind. Yes, because it's not just the COVID policies that if we violate, they're going to suspend us. What about the orthodoxy on gender fluidity? Mm -hmm. uh, what about that belief? That a boy isn't necessarily a boy. He can become a girl. Mm. A girl isn't necessarily a girl. She can decide she wants to be a boy and, 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 and become a boy. So what happens when we say no to that? Huh? Think about it. You move your church worship. Hey, you can cancel me if you want. I'm living in the real world. We worship in Jesus Christ in body. This is how he called us to worship yes, him in the first place. Hey, if you guys can't get me in cyberspace, I'm sorry. I don't control the platform. The platform doesn't agree with our orthodoxy and what we believe. That's right. So everyone who is sharing our worldview is suddenly in a position to be canceled. So the plot thickens. So you you retreated to cyberspace from in-church worship, anticipating that things would come back to normal and the arbiters in cyberspace will be fair. But they have an agenda. Mm -hmm. And now that these things have occurred, we see their agenda. Mm -hmm. So all of a sudden, your church is in the hand of Mr. Dorsey, who oh. runs Twitter. Your church is in the hand of Mrs. Zuckerberg, wow. who runs Instagram and Facebook. Say it ain't so. mm -hmm. Come on now, somebody. Right. Your church is in the hand of Jess Bezos, who owns Amazon. Right. So I hope you understand what's going on here right now. So these platforms now have decided that what we say will go <coughs> if you're going to use our platform. I understand that. I can respect you for that. It's a private platform, but for crying out loud, we moved from the newspapers, we moved from, from radio stations, and we moved from all of these other mediums, and we were drawn into cyberspace. Now we realize that cyberspace isn't just cyberspace, it's control space. So we have a problem. And the churches that are depending on Mark Zuckerberg. 
Come on now. Uncooked Apple, so we can't leave him out. Okay? These people collectively own the internet. Okay? When the, the president was restricted, you know, they canceled the president. Yeah. Mm. It, he, he can't get his word out anywhere. Right. Maybe on his cell phone, that's about it. Yeah, yeah. But, but you all understand. If they can cancel Donald Trump, that's a warning to all of us. This is not right and left. This is right and wrong. We're not concerned about politics. We're not concerned about right and left. So, so our vantage point is very different. The way we look at things, it's kind of like, I'm going to look the way God wants me to look at things. And what God says is true is true. What God says is right is right. Come on, you all understand what I'm saying. So I can't get mad at a man who agrees with me at times that some of the things that God said and he does those things. I'm going uh, to actually commend him. Yeah. For the things that he says that are godly, or the yeah. things that he does that are godly. Yeah. Okay, I know what I'm talking about. Yeah. He defunded Planned Parenthood. Hallelujah. Yes, In Jesus' name. Yeah. That's what Christians would have to say. Yeah. But th those are the people on the right. I'm not talking about right and left. I'm talking about right and wrong. Yeah. We are on the right side of God. Yes. That's it. So if God says something is wrong, guess what? It's wrong. No matter what Mark Zuckerberg has to say, you can cancel me all you want to. I'm not living in cyberspace. The prince of the power of the air is the devil. And now you can see that. He owns the air. All right? He reigns from out there. You have to understand that. Look at where the church is retreat, retreated to. Right in the arms of the devil. So you've sown the wind, now you're going to reap the whirlwind. Because you made it right and left rather than right and wrong. Because you can't stand with the left being a Christian. Huh? I, I can't support Planned Parenthood. I can't support free term. I can't support a woman's right to choose if that choice is to commit murder. Oh, it's not murder, it's not a baby, it's a fetus. What are you, stupid? Most of them can, can live at the point that they avoided. At least our governor did something positive. You know what he did? He passed an ordinance, since everybody else is passing ordinances, he passed one saying that if you abort a child, okay, you gotta bury it or cremate it. That puts it back into humanity, and it cuts half the profits from the abortion clinic. Because they sell the babies. Yes, you went in to get a service that the government might have subsidized or whatever the case might be, but they try to take your baby out whole because it's worth more money to them when they sell the whole baby rather than sell the pieces. But most of, a lot of the vaccines are made with aborted babies and the like. You know, you need the stem cells and, and this sort of stuff from what I'm reading. So the idea is like, well, the end justifies the mean. So it's okay because people are going to live from those that die. Or it, those that die aren't really people in the first place. They aren't children. They're just fetuses. The word fetus means baby. It's just in a different language. So they have changed sin and given it political terminology. Okay? So it removes it from the, the venue of sin. It's no longer sin. Now it's politics. Now, so, you want to talk about homosexuality and lesbianism, we call it marriage equality. Thank you, Mr. Obama. Right. Huh? Marriage equality. <coughs> and it sounds so nice and polite. Who wouldn't want marriage equality? A man should be able to marry any woman that he chooses. Of any race, of any creed. Do I have a witness in here? Yeah. Marriage equality means that old people get to get married just like young people get to get married. Huh? Whoever wants to, let them get married if they want to. But God defines marriage. Read Genesis chapter 2. Right there in the Garden of Eden, there were only two humans on the planet. God made the woman. He said it's not good that man should be alone. Thank God for that. Huh? So God made a helpmate for Adam. Thank God for that. And it wasn't Adam and Steve. Come on. So out of man, he made woman, all right? And when God presented the woman to the man in Genesis chapter 2, verses 24 and 25, you know what he said? Okay? Adam said, now this is bone of my bone.
on the flesh of my flesh. You should have called woman because you've taken out a man. Now I got something to occupy my time. That's what Adam was saying because God said all the other animals have somebody. The man had nobody to be with. So God made him a perfect helpmate. Somebody exactly the opposite of him. Not another dude. <laughs> Let me see looking at me shaking her head. Get us in trouble or something. No! Okay? And, and it's not that, you know, okay, well, it's not really another dude because he decided that he was going to reassign his gender somewhere back there. And he went through the treatment and got hormonal treatment and it removed hair and made his voice a little bit higher like Michael. You know, that kind of stuff. All right? So, so all of a sudden, you become a girl. All right? So, you change the outer appearance a little bit, but the hard wiring is the same. Wow. Okay? God made us in his image after his likeness. Why in the world would a man want to become a woman? Wow. You're at the top of the food chain, fool. God made man in his image after his likeness. He said it was not good that man should be alone, and he made a woman. Now, now, let me, let me explain some things to you. Go back to our text. We're in Joshua chapter 24, verse 15. And if it seems evil unto you to serve the Lord, choose you this day whom you will serve, whether the gods which your fathers served that were on the other side of the flood, or the gods of the Amorites in whose land you dwell. All right? Allow me to paraphrase, mm -hmm. okay? Ooh. Come on, Pastor. Allow me to paraphrase. Verse 15 again. And if it seem evil unto you to serve the Lord, choose you this day whom you will serve. Whether the tech giants yeah. in cyberspace, Mr. Dorsey from Twitter, <laughs> or Mark Zuckerberg from Facebook All right. and Instagram, Huh? Or Google, who owns YouTube and Google and other platforms. Or Jeff Bezos, who own Amazon. Those are the people that we call tech giants of our day. But we see that they're more than kingmakers. They, in fact, are the kings. I just saw a report that was released earlier this week that Amazon has become the number one food retailer. Wow. In the country. Food! I'd rather have Giant Eagle and Dave's than to get locked into purchasing in cyberspace. Yes, Amazon will deliver your food the same day or the next morning. You can order your food on Walmart.com, boom, and they'll deliver your food. They promise that they'll do better than the West Side Market. When you go to the West Side Market and buy fruit and stuff, right? If they don't let you pick it yourself, you blew it. Because all the stuff they have up, they put the best part forward. You all understand? And you see some of those oranges, you say, man, those are some nice looking oranges. And you say, give me, give me six of those. Okay? And they put six in the bag, and by the time you get to the car and you look at those, you say, that's not what I bought. That's what tends to happen. Those are not the ones that I would have picked for myself. But the idea they're saying, we'll do that. Uber Eats will bring you your food. I mean, you don't even have to go to Chipotle anymore. You can just call it in, and for four dollars, they'll bring it all the way to your house. It's still be kind of warm too. Okay? Can you imagine? So they're teaching us, they're transforming us into something that we haven't been, okay? They're teaching us how to operate from the house, okay? And changing our lives fundamentally in ways that we can't even understand, and we refuse to resist. The church surrendered, and they said, okay, well, we're doing all of this because, you know, Romans 13 says that we should obey the higher powers. Romans 13 doesn't say that you should obey the higher powers. The Romans 13 says there's no power but that of God. That's right. That's right. If the powers that be are not ordained by God, Amen. then we have to resist that power. Isn't that what the Bible tells us? What am I going to conform to, whatever? In Jesus' name? 
I don't support any of this stuff that's going on right now. You know why? Because Jesus is my Lord. Now, let me show you something in the same text that we're looking at. All right? Now, now I want you to stop. Okay? Look at what he says. Verse 12. I sent hornets before you, which drove them out before you, even the two kings of the Amorites, but not with the sword, nor with your bow. Okay? And I have given you a land for which you did not labor, and cities which you did not build, and you dwell in them. Of the vineyards and the olive yards which you planted not, do you eat? Okay? Yeah. That's what we have to understand. Uh -huh. God has been good to us. Yes, he right? has. All of a sudden, our lives are being transformed by the devil. Yeah. Don't forget, he is the prince of the power of the air. Yeah. How dare you call cyberspace the devil? Because there's one person that's excluded from cyberspace. Yeah. His name is Jesus. Jesus. Yeah. Jesus. Yeah. Jesus. Uh, nobody asks, what would Jesus do in cyberspace? No. Nobody asks, what would Jesus think in cyberspace? Oh, right huh? The Bible says, as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. Where are you? Okay, there's a God consciousness nowhere to be found in cyberspace. Okay? Nobody. They, they discourage talk about our yeah. Lord and Savior Jesus yeah. Christ. You know why? Because it contradicts their orthodoxy. Right. Because, yeah. listen, all you got to call, call Jesus' name around a homosexual or a lesbian. Oh, here you go again. <laughs> 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 Oh, they love those churches where the pastors don't say nothing. Don't ask. Right. Don't tell. Mm -hmm. Okay. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. Choir stand chuck full of them. No sir. Huh? No, sir. Why you say no sir? You ain't seen that? Yes, you have. You're a musician. Okay. I'm not you, but I understand. You know exactly what I'm talking about. Okay. I, the last time I said no, they're not coming back here like that anymore. Okay. Had all these guys prancing around the sanctuary and stuff. Okay. Just about organ and stuff. Stop working. That's what we get for inviting them in. Okay. Okay. That's what we get. I spent a lot of money to get the organ fixed. They put the organ. Okay. Oh, they were dancing and prancing and carrying. It was a Thanksgiving service. You know what I'm thinking? Y'all know what I'm talking about. We had to come through here with holy water and sprinkle water all over the place and stuff and beg God to forgive us for allowing that stuff to go on in here. Okay? Never again. It wasn't about the money. It was just loyalty to the body that I was belonging to. Okay? But it's kind of like people are weird. People are weird. Okay? Um, the end justifying the means is where I'm going to close. To you Americans that might be listening to this message, let me say this. Right now, they're coming for us. In a minute, they'll be coming for you. All right? They're coming for the church right now. They have us where they want us. And we have pretty much surrendered. Why? Would a pastor invoke Romans 13? That Romans 13 says, submit to higher powers. That's what the pastors of closed churches right. are telling their members. Okay? The authority said that we have to keep the churches shut until it's safe. Okay? I had my pastor, one of my pastors told me that. I'm not gonna say my pastor, but one of the pastors that I'm, I dearly love says, well, that's what we have to do. I said, well, what if they don't say it's okay to put the churches to open back up? God didn't put the church in the hand of politicians. That's not what he meant in Romans 13. When he said submit to higher powers, he said there's no power but that of God. And if those powers are ordained by God, they'll be doing godly things. God is not going to ordain evil. Amen. God does not support Amen. evil. We understand all of that. We're not dumb. Okay? So why would I listen to a higher power that tells me it's time to shut the church when Jesus said, occupy until I come? So who am I listening to? 
And my governor never shut the churches. No. So my governor endorsed us being here. He said, I want you to social distance and worship regularly. But most of the churches in Cleveland are closed. You know why? Because they're all right and left instead of right and wrong. If you substitute anything for what's wrong, then you're willing to accept whatever comes your way. As long as I'm not a part of it, as long as they don't make me, they are making you do it, okay? And here, listen, let me, let me tell you guys something. Okay, we're black folk in here. Black lives matter. I wanna show you, I, I, you know what I did? See, I, I don't believe in just, just, I wanna hear the facts. Yeah. Give me the facts, all right, that's what I want. And you know what I do? I don't want to sign into YouTube. I'm trying to get back to my phone to mail. I want to show you something. I went to Black Lives Matter's website. Okay? Because you know a lot of black people, uh, some of the churches, I, 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 I was watching, I was on the internet the other day. I was watching something that, that we did. And one of our big churches nearby, their stuff popped up. And the pastor had on a Black Lives Matter t-shirt, had a big Black Lives Matter banner hanging behind him as he's talking in Jesus' name. Listen now, Black Lives Matter, this man actually had Black Lives Matter stuff and advocating it and preaching it. And I know a lot of preachers who are saying that, Black Lives Matter. But what I wanted to do, I went to Black Lives Matter and I wanted to see what they have to say. All right, so bear with me here. I'm gonna pull this up as soon as I get my mail open. Here it is, I'm sorry. Okay, Black Lives Matter. I have to read it. You just have to hear this. I'll get better at tech stuff later, all right? BLM. The organization website says this. We disrupt the Western prescribed nuclear family structure requirement by supporting each other as extended families and villages that collectively care for one another, especially our children, to the degree that mothers, parents, and children are comfortable. Mothers, parents, and children. No, mothers, fathers, and children are comfortable. It's not clear what life would be like in such a collective village after two, the two-parent family has been disrupted, but it's encouraging that the organization su suggests participation will be voluntary, okay? Mandatory collectivism has ended in misery wherever it's been tried. Okay, here's what these people are saying. We don't know what it's gonna look like. Yes, we do! It's all the projects! Yeah. Mm -hmm. Bear with me here. He's talking about a post-family ideology. Black Lives Matter is saying we want mothers, parents, and children to be comfortable. The reason it's mothers, parents, and children, and not mothers, fathers, and children, is because a lot of our households now got two women. Huh? Right through the African-American community, there are more lesbians in our community than any other community on the planet. We understand why. Most of, you did, most of us didn't have fathers in the home. So a girl naturally would think she could become a boy if she had not been exposed to a man. But if you've been exposed to a father in the home, somebody who is providing, protecting, and is the priest of your family, you know your limitations, and you already know what God says. So I don't want to hear about mother, parents, and children. You know why it's mother, parents, and children? Because two lesbians can't produce a child anyway. And Black Lives Matter, a part of their orthodoxy, is the same globalism. So guess what? They want population decrease too. So you black people that are supporting instead of the right and wrong, but supporting right versus left, here's what you're missing. All right? You've put yourself in a situation where God can't bless you. All right? If you're rejoicing because Donald Trump got censured or, get, or got, can we say, impeached for the second time, 
okay? Rather than heartbroken, then you are an idiot. Yes, Let me explain why. Because it's not about right and left. Yeah. If it was about right and left, I understand. But it's about right and wrong. Right. Donald Trump defunded Parenthood. Donald Trump said, okay, we're going to have two bathrooms. Male, female, boy, girl, man, woman. Bada boom, bada bing. I like that, okay? The man supported Israel, okay? He supports the church of Jesus Christ. So if you want to tell me, you, oh, he's a racist. He's a racist. He's a racist. Listen to me. He doesn't support Black Lives Matter. I'm not supporting them. Okay? They want to create more projects. That's what's wrong with us now. Women raising children by themselves thinking it's okay. It's not okay. Look at, look at the price we're paying for it. Okay? A lot of these same children won't make it to adulthood. Who killing them? Other children. We need fathers in our home. We don't have a complete... Uh, listen, who's going to cut the grass when you move into the house? Well, there's no big deal with that. Yes, it, it matters to your neighbors. So I'm saying to you, citizenship skills are things that dad teaches his children. Okay, Dad is concerned about the safety of his children. Oh, please bear with me now. All I'm saying to you, we need fathers in our home. So we need to begin educating our sons and our daughters and let them know you don't just produce a baby by having sex and suddenly you're a family. It doesn't work that way. Even Black Lives Matter is saying it doesn't work that way. Marriage is the institution. Marriage is honorable before God. And the married bed, marriage bed is under fire. And that's what we have in our Lord and Savior. Cyberspace doesn't support that. Okay? It's going to criminalize us for the things that we believe. I'll probably get suspended again today for not supporting their orthodoxy on same-sex marriage. Okay? Or not supporting what they believe about a woman's right to choose to kill her baby. Okay? But I don't care. Yeah. Jesus called me to preach. Yeah. And I'm trying you to choose you this day yeah. who you will serve. Yeah. Uh, whether the gods of technology or the Lord our God. Amen. Who are you going to serve? Yeah. As for me and my house, yeah. we're going to serve the Lord. Yeah. I am the Father in my house. I'm the, even my children are all grown. And now I have grandchildren. Because Joshua, yeah. in this particular text, he warns them. He warns them. He warns them. Because if you make the wrong choice here, okay, God will enslave you again. Yeah. What do you think is happening in America? We got a pandemic that God sent, okay? Yes, we want to give the Chinese and Wuhan, China, credit for it. But no, it's a pandemic. God uses those throughout the scripture. Yeah. Read 2 yeah. Chronicles chapter 7 and verse 14. God said, if I send locusts to devour the land all year while we're focusing on COVID. Yeah. The locust was raging, right? Oh, yeah. Okay? He said, if I send a famine, then there'd be no rain. Or if I send pestilence yeah. amongst the people. God said, if my people that are called by my name yeah. will humble themselves yeah. and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked yeah. ways, I will hear from heaven. I will forgive their sin. We haven't turned from our wicked ways. In fact, wickedness is ruling the day. So we have sown the wind, and now we're going to reap the whirlwind. But therefore, God is my refuge and strength. He's a very present help in trouble. I will not fear. Though the earth be removed, and though the mountains be carried yeah. into the midst of the sea, though the waters thereof roar and be troubled, though the mountains shake with the swelling thereof, I'm not worried about a thing. Because my God is in the midst of her, and she shall not be moved. God shall help her, and that right early. The peace and rage on him, they can move his boy. Okay? The kingdoms were moved. He uttered his voice, and the earth melted. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our yes, earth. He told the works of the Lord. What desolations he's made in the earth. He made the wars to cease. Okay? We're talking about Jesus Christ here. Yes. Real power. Yeah.
Jeff Bezos ain't got no power. He might be a trillionaire, but that's not power. Okay? He's gonna have to bow to the living God. That's what this is all about. So I don't care how much money they have or how much, can we say, influence and how much they have subjected us and whether you realize it or not, you're addicted to the dopamine that you're getting from cyberspace. Yeah. So you want to live there. When you don't come out, they'll send you a notification and you grab your phone and yeah. see what it is like back. And you don't even understand you're being enslaved. Yeah. Don't even understand. Yeah. And you're driving you further and further away from our God. Yeah. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Here is why. God loves me. But he's not a selfish God. I'm not worthy of being loved like that. I'm not. When I was yet without strength in due time, Christ Jesus died for me. Okay. And he made me aware that's the best you, that might have been the worst thing that happened to some of God's enemies. Yeah. Okay? That he made me aware of how much he loves me. And he commended his love toward me. He backed it up. He proved it. And while I was yet a sinner, yeah. Jesus died on the cross for me. Yeah. The just for the unjust. Jesus didn't die for himself. He didn't have to die for himself. Jesus couldn't die for himself. He was born of a virgin. He was sinless. Sin, okay, and death work together. Death is a byproduct of sin. Jesus was not a sinner. He was born of a virgin. So God made him to be sin for us, who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. Do you understand what they're saying? Jesus was born of a virgin and he was a sinless human being until he went to Calvary's cross. Yeah. On that day that we call Good Friday, I don't know, it must be only good because of what we got through it, but it wasn't good for him. But on that day, from 12 to 3 p.m., yeah. when darkness was upon the face of the earth, there was a transaction going on that you might not be aware of. Okay? Because what was happening at that point is that God was taking the sin of the entire world and he was giving them or putting them into his son. Jesus tasted death for all of us because all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. So when Jesus came out from behind that cloud at 3 p.m., he cried, Eloi, Eloi, lama sabachthani, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? He wasn't forsaking you, Lord. He was forsaking Mary. Yeah. He was forsaking Donna and Tanya and Norma yeah. and Sheree yeah. and Alex and all of us yeah. in this room. So the father turned his back on him. He wasn't turning his back on his son. Right. It was an act of mercy. Jesus couldn't die until he became sinner. Yeah. So God made him to be sin for us, okay, as an act of mercy towards us yeah. and an act of mercy towards him. Because here he is on the cross, having his heel bruised, pushing up off all, all the cross all the time, trying to breathe, okay? The Bible said, okay, to the devil in the garden, God said, oh yeah, you're going to bruise his heel, but he's going to crush your head. And his head was crushed on Calvary's cross. He did not come down off the cross. He tasted death for all men. And guess what? Three days later, he arose from the dead. He still had the holes in his hands. He still had all the scars. He still had the hole in his side. We will see him as he is. Jesus is Lord and God. He died on the cross for our sins. He was buried. He arose again from the dead. And the Father said, if you believe, if you believe that Jesus died on the cross, that he was buried and that he arose again from the dead. You have enough faith to be saved. Now, all you got to do is go to him in prayer. And that is if you believe the record that God gave of his son. All right? If you believe that, go to him in prayer. 
In fact, I'll lead you right now in prayer. If you want to give your heart to the Lord right now, if you want to become a Christian right now, tomorrow may be too late. People are dying all around us. Just pray this prayer with me. Lord Jesus, I thank you for your sacrifice. You did it for me, the just for the unjust. I believe that you are the Christ of God. I believe you went to Calvary and then died on the cross. I believe you were buried, and I believe you arose again from the dead. Your shed blood is what washes away my sin. I don't have to understand it, but I believe it. And I'm confessing my sin to you, and I'm asking you to forgive me of my sin and save my soul. Thank you, Father, for drawing me unto your Son. Thank you, Jesus, for hearing my humble prayer, forgiving my sins, and saving my soul. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Now you're born again like the rest of us. Find a Bible-believing, Bible-teaching church yeah. and go there near where you live. No home stuff. No. Okay, Bezos and them are about to censor all of that. Censorship is what's next for all of the churches that retreated to cyberspace. Now that they got you out on their platform, no place you can go now. What you gonna do now? You mortgaged everything on Zoom huh? okay. and Instagram or Facebook. Shut me down if you must. Cancel me if you must. Okay. Woo. Jesus will never cancel me. I'm so excited about what our Lord has done. And when I see this persecution, I know our redemption draweth near. I'd like for you to stand as we get ready to go. Oh, Lord, thank you. Okay, for the cancel culture. You know what? Let's get back to church. Okay? Get your folk back to church. You can cancel me in cyberspace, you can't cancel me here. This is the house of God. It belongs to Him. He wants us to come together and to fellowship and to love each other and to practice all of the attributes of Christianity on one another. You can't even drink communion on Zoom. Uh, what are you going to prepare your own juice? Or your own piece of bread? Somehow the symbolism is a thing. We can't make worship happen in the devil's domain. It has to happen where God says to worship. So forget them. He's going to cancel them in a minute. All right. They all get canceled all right. in a minute. Trust me, watch. Glory. To the only wise God, I will say very glory.